Good Friday morning to you for Taylor Sur. I'm Regan Devines in Caracas, Venezuela. Thank you so much for being here with us today on From the South. This coming Monday, all eyes will be on Presidents Nicolas Maduro of Venezuela and Juan Manuel Santos of Colombia. They will meet in Ecuador's capital city, Quito. The meeting will be mediated by UNASUR, CELAC, Uruguay and Ecuador. Maduro and Santos are expected to find solutions to the high level of crime being committed by Colombian paramilitaries and others via the border between both countries. Venezuela's major concern is the massive smuggling of subsidized goods into Colombia for a large profit. Since the closure by Venezuela of various border crossings, crime has dropped and the local economy has improved. Next Monday in Quito, with UNASUR President Tabaré Vázquez and the President of the CELAC, Rafael Correa Delgado, I will be there in Quito, offering my hand with President Santos and sitting down with him to speak deeply and at length about everything on the table to create a new, peaceful border. And so we can move forward and sign a historic agreement of coexistence, respect. The fate of two pilots on board a Venezuelan Air Force fighter jet that crashed after being deployed to check on an aircraft that illegally entered the country's airspace is currently unclear. The foreign aircraft is believed to have entered from Colombia through the north northwestern region of Venezuela. Officials have been patrolling on high alert as the region is heavily used by Colombian paramilitaries to smuggle cocaine through Venezuela to Central America and the Caribbean. An investigation has been launched to determine why the Venezuelan Air Force jet crashed. Rescue efforts continue this morning in Chile after the massive 8.3 earthquake that rocked the country, causing tsunami waves of up to 15 feet. At least 12 people were reported dead and dozens more injured. The government ordered the evacuation of almost a million people as a precaution. Chile's president, Michel Bachelet, visited the most affected areas, and it is believed that reconstruction is expected to cost billions. In 2010, an 8.8 .8 quake left over 500 people dead in Chile and damages well over $30 billion. The quake was actually pretty subtle at first, but then got stronger in a short time. People all started to run out, some carrying babies and some screaming and crying. Our coffee shop became empty in less than a minute. Customers just ran out without taking food or bags. We were warned that glass windows might fall down, and as you see, ambulances and fire trucks all rushed here. Mexican authorities have announced the arrest of one of the supposed masterminds behind the apparent massacre of 43 students that happened almost a year ago. The man has been identified as Gildardo Lopez and is said to be a leader of the United Warriors drug gang. He also had a pending arrest warrant for kidnapping and organized crime. This comes a day after a second set of remains of a student named Josivani Guerrero were identified by his mother. Until yesterday, we had the hope he was still alive, but right now, believe me, we feel a pain. That well, maybe, probably, they were really burned. We do not know who took them, if they thought they were bad people because they don't burn bad people. And we would like to think they were drug traffickers. We hope they would burn not the poor peasants who only study to be able to defend themselves, to be able to give their other family members a life. And now to Colombia, where the movement to modify the constitution to allow for President Evo Morales to run for re-election in 2020 continues to grow. Our correspondent in La Paz, Dimitri O'Donnell, has the story. They came in their thousands from all over the country to support a man they call a hero. Forming part of a broad social movement, the groups are backing Evo Morales to stay on as president. To do this, they will have to amend Bolivia's constitution so Morales can run for re-election in 2020. Today is a historic day at a national level and globally because the Bolivian people want the president to continue to transform this country. Evo is the best president of Bolivia and in the world. We have our president. We have Evo. The plan comes just eight months after Bolivia's first indigenous president won a third term. But that victory hasn't satisfied Evo Morales' supporters. They want more. 
Our President Evo has shown a great deal of skill to govern this country and has given social equality and done a lot to respect our rights. The carnival-like atmosphere raised hopes that Congress will approve a bill paving the way for this major constitutional reform. But not everyone is in favor of changing the Constitution. The opposition says it's a bad move for the country. First you have to govern for the people, then you can think election, re-election, election and another election. Let's solve the economic problems of our country first. A recent poll confirmed that 54 percent of Bolivians were in favor of the president running for another term. Most of the people here today form part of the traditional core that got Evo Morales elected back in 2005 and they're hoping to do the same again to keep him in office until 2025. If the bill is approved by Congress, it will then be put to a referendum, most likely in 2016. If that vote is also carried, the next stage would be to send the bill to the National Assembly for final approval. Dimitri O'Donnell, Telesur, La Paz. Six fighters of Colombia's second largest guerrilla group, the National Liberation Army, or ENL, ELN rather, were killed during a bombing raid in a forested area in the west of the country. The bombing took place in light of intentions of peace talks between the government and the group. The attack of military planes against the ELN camp occurred in a rural area of the municipality of Tambo. The government and the rebel group have been in contact for almost two years, negotiating a way forward for peace talks. In a joint operation of the army, the air force, the police, we managed to terminate six members of the developing military operation, the Jose Maria Becerra Front of the National Liberation Army, and one was captured. Cubans gathered to watch Pope Francis' personal message to them ahead of his arrival to the island nation this Saturday. The Vatican said it hoped the Pope's trip to Cuba would help bring an end to a more than five-decade-old U.S. blockade that had cost the island close to a trillion dollars. The Pope will spend four days in Cuba before flying to the United States. He is visiting both countries for the first time as pontiff. The Pope asked Cubans to pray and told them that he was coming to share faith and the hope. Now a brief of other stories making headlines across the globe. Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe defeated a censure bill against him in the upper house of parliament. The government has been pushing through contentious defense legislation that could see its troops fighting overseas for the first time since World War II. Japan's ally, the United States, has welcomed the shift, but China, where bitter memories of Japan's wartime aggression run deep, has repeatedly expressed concern about the legislation. The ruling party insists the bill is necessary to guarantee the security of the nation. The peace and security of the nation is not only of utmost importance, it is also a matter of utmost urgency. Protesters are gathering in front of parliament as the Japanese government began a final push to enact the defense bill. Abe says the policy shift is vital to meet new challenges such as from a rise in China. But thousands of demonstrators have rallied next parliament. Every day this week, chanting scrap the war bills and Abe resign. In 1960s, Abe's grandfather, Nobusuke Kishi, was forced by protesters to resign after pushing a U.S.-Japan security treaty through parliament. There are tens of thousands of people out there gathered in the rain until early in the morning. It's out listening to what they are saying. Who else are you in politics for if you don't listen to the people's voices? In just one day, Croatia received over 8,000 refugees that poured in from Serbia. Facing chaos and overwhelmed by the influx, the Croatian government ordered close seven of its eight border crossings with Serbia. Officials said the country could not cope with the flood of refugees seeking a new route into the EU. The wave of refugees into Croatia came after Hungary kept them out by erecting a fence and using tear gas and water cannon against them. We are waiting from the, this morning from 9 o'clock till right now. We are waiting for the bus. Unfortunately, there was uh, six buses and uh, there is no more buses uh, until yet. Greek authorities began to set up polling stations across the country ahead of Greece's general election this coming Sunday. 
the leftist Chirita party of former Prime Minister Alexis Tsipras was losing ground. According to polls, the race will be closed between Syriza and the conservative New Democratic Party. But neither party came close to the 38 percent threshold, widely believed to be needed to establish a majority in the 300-seat parliament. About 9.5 million Greeks are expected to cast their vote. We head to Pyongyang now, the capital of North Korea. The 12th National Syrian or Korean Traditional Wrestling Tournament took place there. More than 100 competitors from around the country took part in the competition. Syrian is a test of strength as wrestlers grab a belt that wraps around the waist and thigh of the opponent with the goal of forcing any part of the opponent's body above the knee to the ground. This year, the champion received a bull as a prize at the closing ceremony. More FIFA corruption has been exposed. The body secretary general, Jerome Valk, uh, was put on leave hours after a former footballer raised allegations that Valk may have been involved in an improper deal to resell 2014 World Cup tickets for a lucrative profit. The football organization said it was made aware of the allegations involving Valk and has requested a formal investigation by the FIFA Ethics Committee. This is the latest from FIFA, which has been rocked by ongoing corruption investigations by Swiss and U.S. authorities. For more on these and other stories, please feel free to visit our website, taylorsudotv.net slash English. For Taylor Sud English, I'm Regan Devines. We'll have another news brief for you at noon.